Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and breaking down in bite-sized pieces. Today, that's a pretty interesting stuff on a pretty flat crypto day. So first up, Three Arrows Capital CEO talks about how Bitcoin dominance is irrelevant unless you are a billionaire and how he would make more riskier choices for increased gains. And I'm gonna actually dispute some of the things he talks about because there is uh, gains in safety. Also take a look at the uh, Voyager loyalty program, AMC Theaters, uh, based here in the United States, is going to accept cryptocurrency. Then we're gonna quickly talk about regs or regulations, Bitcoin and Ethereum versus CEO. So that is the story today. So let's just break right in. So first up, uh, the market cap today is looking pretty good. It's Sunday, beautiful day again, and uh, we're at $2.12 trillion. So a little bit of a dip, which is odd because usually Sundays used to be the dip day and then Mondays became the dip day. So maybe today we'll have a dip within a dip. Who knows? But uh, that is what we have right now. And the reason why I labeled the thumbnail the way that it is, is because it doesn't matter that today is a down day. These are the days that lull you to sleep because you're like, ah, oh, nothing's really going on, so it's not exciting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go away. And that is the exact opposite thing you should be doing as an investor. Now, I can't tell you what to do. This is just investment opinion, not investment advice, but I can tell you what I'm doing. And today is one of those days. This is the most crucial days for me to really take a look at what are down and what I should be dollar cost averaging into. So Bitcoin price is 47.5, only down about 2%, so not too bad. And then we take a look at uh, Ethereum and the other types of tokens. We've got Ethereum at uh, 3,300, but everything is down. Cardano's down $2.35, dollar 85 or uh, almost 2% for XRP. Anything big down? Avalanche is up 4%. I'm gonna tell you why in a sec. Uniswap, blah, 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 blah. Algorand is up. Congratulations, Algorand holders. Cosmos, 2% up. But everything else is just in a sea of red except for near protocol at 7%. Also, if you're a big trader, we're using Trade the Chain. This is for sentiment analysis. I'm going to click on the one hour projected range. So take a look at these. Uh, Wazir X, uh, that's the token for the Indian exchange. Uh, Origin Trail, Origin Protocol, hmm. you trust Celo and Digibyte and also Phantom. And these are the uh, projected ranges over the next hour. So uh, if you're looking for something like that, the link's in the description, looks something like this. And you can use sentiment analysis as well as fundamental and technical to make the best trades uh, for yourself. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just break into today's uh, big story. It's not a big story. It really leads into something else. And that's why I chose this one. So this is Three Arrows Capital co-founder says Bitcoin dominance is irrelevant unless you're a billionaire. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. And a couple of things he says makes complete sense, but there's a caveat I need to, to make mention. So what's going on with this one is that uh, Suzu, the co-founder and CEO of Hedge Funds, says that newcomers should be opting for risk riskier crypto tokens. Zhu said that he would personally bet his chips on Solana and Avalanche, as well as their ecosystems, if he were starting out today. So just to be aware, uh, Three Arrows uh, invest heavily into Avalanche. So, you know, it's the age-old question. Is it the chicken or the egg? Did this Is this guy saying this after they just invested into it, or does he really believe into it? I would hope he totally believes into it. Uh, that would make uh, uh, everybody feel a bit safer in their investment. But I have to agree. I mean, I like both of those projects. I own both of those projects, Solana and Avalanche. And, um, yeah, I think they're a pretty good bet. But... What he says here, as far as uh, betting onto riskier uh, assets, he's right in a sense. And when we get to regulation, I'll talk about it. But right now, if you're looking at uh, what's going to happen with Bitcoin and Ethereum, look, Bitcoin, this bull run could go to 100,000. I, I, I think it's a solid, a solid bet on me. I can't tell you what to do, but that's what I think is going to happen. And um, I think if you're just looking for the safest option, it, Bitcoin it is. Or Ethereum could go up uh, 3x, maybe 2x, maybe 2.5x, because Ethereum is on the tips of the, the minds of everybody else out there. So if we do those two things, I mean, those are the safest bet. But if you're really looking to make incredible gains, then you're not going to find it there. Just the, just the truth. So you have to increase your risk and go down below the top, you know, the top 30, 40, 50, maybe even the top 200. But uh, that's where it gets riskier. And uh, for me, I like to spread my tokens around because uh, I don't think a lot of those will be uh, move, uh, doing well moving forward. So it really all just depends on you. Anyhow, Zeus says he remains bullish on uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
He predicts the former will flip the market cap of gold, while the latter will eventually reach 25000 So just so you know, the market cap of gold is around $12 trillion, which is kind of weird still, because if you're taking a look at uh, a, a hedge against inflation, I believe gold is actually down. Correct me in the comment section. It really hasn't performed as well as it should. I own gold, I own silver, and I own Bitcoin. So uh, for all the gold bugs out there, I don't see why you can't just hop on board with us. Why don't you hedge your bet against your hedged bet? which is invest into Bitcoin. I don't know why you don't do it. This doesn't make any sense to me. And then lastly, economist Alex Kruger recently tweeted that crypto investors who seek extreme returns should put their money elsewhere. And uh, that is it. So they're all right. If you want to make incredible gains, then it goes on that side. And then maybe you should take a look at, um, you know, a little bit farther down, invest into NFTs, invest into, you know, other projects that do things like that. But if you're looking for that for the safety option, Bitcoin, Ethereum are, are solid. And then, of course, you can go down the list and do whatever you want to do. Again, not investment advice, just investment opinion. And like I said, today is one of those days where if we just take a look at at we already looked at the, at the charts We already know that it's just boring and nothing's really going on. And this is when people don't do anything. This is the days that you have to take action. I shouldn't say like that. These are the days that I take action because I know when if I do my work right now, it's just like planting seeds. I'm planting seeds in the off season or the planting season, and I'm just going to wait for those to bloom, and I'm going to pluck those, those ripe harvests later down the line. And that's where all the hard work is done right now. And nobody does it, or very few people do it. I'm hoping that you do it, and then you make those hard investments as things are so volatile and going down, maybe staying sideways where it's just boring. And then you can invest, then you can uh, uh, get the uh, fruit of your labors uh, later on. So that is what's going on. I think quarter four is going to be pretty big uh, after we get out of September because it's very volatile. But uh, we will see. All right. So that takes care of that little snippet. And then um, in a little bit, I'm going to talk to you why uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are probably the better option uh, moving down as far as regulations. But I want to talk real quick about is the Voyager loyalty program. And this is what I've been seeing all across Twitter. Everybody who uses Voyager and has uh, VGX tokens, this is what they get. So for all their different trades, because remember, uh, Voyager is like the hotels.com. Uh, it's, it's a brokerage. It kind of just takes a look at all the different uh, crypto exchanges out there and gives you the best rate. And then whatever it is, as far as price improvement, whatever they save you, uh, they pocket a little bit of that and they pass you on to the savings, right? But what's great about this loyalty program is that depending on how much Voyager VGX tokens you have, you get uh, essentially cash back, or in this case, VGX back. So for this one, three extra total price improvements of, Jesus, 478 from September. So this is only two weeks. Only two weeks, uh, this person got 585 uh, Voyager tokens. Or in reality, it's, uh, you know, 1,500 bucks because he, he spent 470. He or she spent 470. It's pretty good. And then uh, this is, uh, you get 35 Voyager tokens because this is 30 bucks from September 1st, 15th. And then also, uh, you also get on this one, it was this person, 300 bucks. And uh, they pocketed VGX tokens, which is pretty crazy because Voyager right now, if we take a look at it, in the last week or so, I mean, we're down as far as like $2.40. And then moving forward, it was uh, just yesterday at $3.38. So uh, pretty good gains. And that is uh, what is going on with uh, with this part. So just this one snippet, and, I, and my price prediction, again, I believe that Voyager is going to $30 by the end of the year. I know people laugh at me. I could care less. That's just where I think it's going to go. It's a prediction. And, uh, and I always feel like utility leads the way. And um, this is just one of those sleepers, again, that really hasn't pumped much at all. And people get ticked off because like, hey, this hasn't pumped like everything else. Well, usually... Uh, things that pump last pump pretty darn hard. Not all the time, but uh, you, you catch my drift. And for me, like when I take a look at this, I'm like, why wouldn't people use this? Because I mean, the more Voyager tokens you hold, first of all, you get staking rewards at 7%. The earning rewards boost because you gain yield just by holding on to your crypto in there. Uh, so like, I know like synthetics or uh, so Ave. I think Polkadot is like 12%, something crazy. So on that, if you have uh, you know a certain amount of Voyager tokens, 5,000, you get another 1%. So that's 13% for doing absolutely nothing on top of the 7% for staking uh, Voyager. Crypto back rewards, 
uh, 1x, 2x, 3x, referral, referrals go up. Crypto withdrawal discount. I mean, everything goes up. So like with this, like if you're going to use Voyager, why wouldn't you use, why wouldn't you load up on the Voyager token on top of the fact that I think it's going to actually appreciate pretty high. Anyhow, that's where I see things. And as far as sleepers, I think that's one of the biggest ones out there. But uh, time will tell. I could be totally wrong. Who knows? Anyhow, so on that note, let's uh, move forward into AMC Theaters with this guy, Adam Aaron. And if you see right here, let me pull this up even, or let me go back. So Adam Aaron is the CEO of AMC Theaters. And the reason why I wanted to show you his bio is this guy's just no slouch. He was the former CEO of Starwood Hotels, Norwegian Cruise Line, Bell Resorts, and the Philly 70, Philadelphia 76ers. So if you're, this is in America, this is the National Basketball Team. Or the uh, <laughs> National Basketball Association, excuse me, not the National Basketball Team. And what it says down here is this. He says, look, uh, crypto enthusiast, you know that AMC Theaters has announced we will accept Bitcoin for online ticket and concessions by the end of the year, this year, 2021. And we also will accept Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. And when I looked at this, it kind of goes in line with what we just talked about as far as this article. You know, uh, co-founder says Bitcoin dominance is irrelevant. And, you know, if you want to get, get, do a little crazier uh, for as far as risky, you can uh, make more gains. But then if you take a look at what these guys are doing and what PayPal is doing, it kind of goes in line with everything we've talked about as far as regulations recently. And the big thing is this, is that as far as regulations go, the SEC is going to clamp down. They're going to say, look, these are securities. And uh, what's going to happen if, if it's deemed a security? Because people don't like, well, who cares about security? I don't really care. I just want to buy it. That's fine. For the investors, it won't really affect us too much. But you know what it will, it will affect? The exchanges that have been selling unregistered securities, I guarantee the SEC will go over them after them and uh, have them pay a huge fine. Also, the projects themselves, which they say, okay, 90% of you are securities. And guess what? Uh, you were uh, selling these tokens to individual investors. You were selling unregistered securities. We're going to go after you. So then, of course, they are going to get hit uh, pretty hard. So then what do you think that's going to happen down to the investor? It'll trickle down to us uh, at some point because the prices will all go up. And that's something that nobody wants to see. However, I think even if that happens, it won't matter because at some point, uh, price will even out. We'll say, fine, there's securities. I don't really care. And then everything will be regulated by uh, the SEC. And then we'll still sell them. And just like we buy stocks and equities and things like that, or equities, it doesn't really matter. It'll just be there as it's, it's, it's a security. So the thing that Zoo talked about in uh, uh, Three Arrows was he's like, you know, if you want to be riskier, you do this. However, there's a, there's a flip side of that. Let's say, for example, that the SEC says these are all securities. But you know what they said has not been a security or is not a security? Bitcoin, because it is uh, fully decentralized. Uh, Ethereum, they say it is adequately decentralized. And there's two things I thought about this is that if you have a cryptocurrency project that has a CEO, um, you can have decentralization, but guess what the SEC can do? They can go right to that company and say, hey, you're the CEO, this is what's going on. And then of course, the argument, of course, that Ripple uh, talks about is like, look, even if we go away, even though there's a CEO, it'll still keep running, but they can still go to the doorstep of that, that place, that entity, that corporation and go, we need you to change some things. So with Bitcoin and Ethereum, even though, even though there's an Ethereum foundation, uh, you can't do that. You can't go to uh, King Bitcoin or Satoshi Nakamoto and say, hey, uh, this is a security and we're going to slap you with it. It doesn't exist. It's just decentralized. And uh, when we take a look at that, really, if we think about, well, what should I do? I think me personally, I think it's a mistake not to invest into Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, just that way. And that's why I do the things that I do. And that's why today uh, I've actually bought some more Bitcoin and Ethereum because everything's flat and nothing's really going on. And that is that for today. So look, uh, that is uh, everything that we want to talk about. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it. So thanks so much for watching. And also I will be on uh, James's channel over at Invest Answers in a couple of hours. And I uh, will also have George from Cryptos R Us. I'll leave a link in the description for that video and that'll be live. Ask us any questions you want to. So that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.